Hello, welcome to lesson 17 of the Learn Swift for Beginners series. In this video, we're going to go through another collection type called the dictionary. In the previous lesson, we went through the array you can see here on the left hand side. And with an array, we had a collection of items where the order mattered. So you can see in this example here in the Swift programming language guide, six eggs is in spot number zero, whereas bananas is in index four. Right, well, a dictionary on this right hand side here is a collection type where order does not matter. So in arrays, we retrieve the item by this index here. And with the dictionary, because order doesn't matter, we retrieve these values using a key. So each value has an associated key when you put it into the dictionary and you need to pass it that same key and it's going to return for you the value. Now, which collection type you use to organize your data is going to depend on obviously what sort of data you're storing. Does order matter? If it does, then the easy answer is to use an array. If it doesn't, then maybe consider using a dictionary. So this is a good example. Airports have these airport codes, right? So each airport has an associated key. And that's a good point. The keys should actually be unique for each uh, value that you put in. Another great example of when to use a dictionary, and this is the example that I'm going to use in this video is um, license plates. So for example, each license plate is tied to a car and each license plate is unique. So the key can be the license plate and the value can be maybe a description of the car or something like that. Let's jump into Xcode um, in this new playground that I have here. And let me show you how to declare a new dictionary and how to work with it. So why don't we declare a variable here and let's call it car db to represent car database and let's uh, looks like my playground has crashed okay and what we're going to do here is to declare a new dictionary so we use the keyword dictionary and followed by that we have these angle brackets where inside we specify the data type of the key followed by the data type of the value so for example, let's pull up that example again. In here, this dictionary, the key would be a string uh, and the value would also be a string. And so in between these two angle brackets, we would just put string comma string. And in order to create a, um, a new dictionary object, we would just end off with those two brackets. And like that, we have an empty dictionary which stores key value pairs and a key value pair is just a fancy name for one of these pairs of data, you know, a key and a value. Um, this dictionary stores key value pairs where the key is a string and the value is a string as well. Now, there is an easier way to write this out without having to write so much. Let me show you that second way. Var car db, uh, let's just say db2 is equal to use the square brackets and then you specify the data type of the key followed by colon and then the data type of the value and again we have these two brackets here to create a new instance of that dictionary or new dictionary object and that's equivalent these two are the same thing doesn't this look very similar to uh, declaring a brand new array don't get confused so for example declaring a new string array would look like this would be my empty array that is expecting to contain string objects and this is an empty dictionary that is expecting to contain key value pairs where the key is string and value is string as well okay so we're going to stick with this sort of declaration here so i'm just going to go ahead delete this array example that was just for demonstration and delete that so now we just have car db is an empty dictionary. Now, how do I assign something into the car database dictionary? Well, I would do car db, and then I would use these two square brackets here, and I would pass in a key, or I would specify a key, rather, and this key would be a license plate, right? So 
you know, this is going to be different depending where you are in the world. Um, but let's just say it's like that. And then you assign the value into the dictionary for that key. So this would be, let's say, a blue uh, Ferrari. Now, this value, blue Ferrari, is tied to this key, JSD238. How do I retrieve the value? Well, it's very simple. I just give it the key. So if someone were to look up this license plate, let's say I'm, I print this out like that, it would print out blue Ferrari. But notice that it's wrapped in an optional tag because, for example, if I passed in a key that doesn't exist, right? let's pass in like ASD 238, then you can see there is no value for that key. All right, so that's why it returns nil. So that's why when you access a dictionary and you pass in a key, it returns to you an optional uh, whatever data type that your value is. So when you pass in a key into your dictionary to retrieve a value, um, just expect that it is an optional and you may need to unwrap it and check if it's nil before using it. Okay, so what if I wanted to, uh, let's, let's label this. So before we continue on, this is declaring a new dictionary. This is uh, adding key value pairs. And this is retrieving data. And how do we update a value for a key? Well, it looks exactly like this up here. So you specify the key that you want to update the value for. And here we can say that this guy now is a red Ferrari. Maybe it got a paint job or something. So when you pass in this key from now on, you're going to get this new value because this basically overwrote whatever was there before. And in order to remove a value, remove a key value pair, let's say, you can do something like this. You pass in the key, two, three, eight, and you assign it nil. And actually, that is going to remove the key value pair from your dictionary. Now I'm going to show you how to iterate over all of the key value pairs in your dictionary. So why don't we just add a second key value pair in here? so that we have more than one item to display. Okay, and this one can be a green uh, Lamborghini. I think that's how you spell it. I don't have one, so <laughs> I don't know for sure. And now let's iterate over it. Wish I had one though. Iterate over it, we use a for loop so we can say for, um, essentially for each key value pair inside the dictionary, do something. And the way you specify this is you pass in, um, we use what's basically called a tuple, okay? And so you can think of a tuple as a set of variables or a bunch of variables. So we'll, we're going to say uh, license car in car db. Now the in keyword shouldn't be new to you because you guys learned about the for loop in a previous Swift lesson. So um, basically what should be new to you though is this, this is a tuple. So for each tuple in this dictionary, we can do something. What's gonna happen is it's going to uh, grab each key value pair and the key is going to be inside license and the value is going to be car like that. So now inside this for loop, it's going to iterate twice and I'm going to find this key or this license inside this license variable and I'm going to find the car, uh, this string here, blue Ferrari or green Lamborghini inside this car variable. And it knows 
even though there's no data type associated with this tuple, because my dictionary is string string for the key and the value, I'm going to simply print car like that. And you can see that hmm, it just it's printing one key value pair here. It's printing one car, but I have two items. And the reason is because we've actually removed a key value pair with this statement here. So if I just comment this guy out, we have our two cars. And it's a red Ferrari because we changed it up here. Now I can also print out the license. I can say, you know, license. Um, you know, I can say something like, car has a license like that has a license so that pretty much wraps up using a dictionary and you're going to find that it will come in handy alongside arrays in organizing your data so thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share it with anyone you know who's also interested in Swift. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.